no way to do it, and therefore the answer is no. And Achilles is impressed and says, hmm, let's look at another example. And they look at the other example and they play and play and play and play and play and can't figure out a match and also can't figure out any way to convince themselves that the answer is no. So it's interesting. This is a puzzle where if I give you certain strings, you might come up with a clever argument to explain why the answer is no. If the answer is yes, you can certainly write a computer program and go about your career and check it every few years and see if it spit out an answer that works, right? Because you can just generate the sequence of these numbers in order of length, you know, all the sequences of length 1, all the sequences of length 2, all the sequences of length 3, all the sequences of length 4. Try them one at a time, and sooner or later, a few centuries down the line, if there's an answer, it will spit out, and it will say, here it is, there's the answer. So you can, you can definitely write a machine that tells you yes when the answer is yes. The question is, can you say the answer no when the answer is no? Occasionally you can if you're a human being and you're looking at a particular case and you come up with a particular idea. But to try to formalize that creativity in a mechanical way that will be able to look at any set of pairs and tell you yes or no in a logical kind of an argument turns out to be impossible. This is what's called an undecidable problem. You can answer yes if the answer is yes, but there's no way to write a program to guarantee to get the answer yes or no correctly. It's one of the highest level first undecidable problems. First you start with diagonalization, and then this comes out of it. And out of this, the reason I brought this up, and we're going to actually prove a lot of things from this problem. If this is undecidable, then so are all the important things you want to know about grammars. And that I can prove to you. All the interesting things that you'd like to do, if you could do them, it would solve this problem that everybody knows is impossible. That means all those interesting things that we really want to do about context-free grammars are impossible to do. They're all undecidable. And that way of connecting this to those problems is called a reduction. You've seen it before in algorithms in polynomial world. Now it's in the undecidable world. I'm going to reduce this problem to all these other problems about grammars and show you that those problems are hard too because this problem's hard.